Hi, Tracy from Nature's Heart. Today I'm going to talk about aromatherapy safety and specifically bath safety. So here we are in my bathroom and um, I have a few props to show you. I just wanted to um, give you some up-to-date research in terms of how to safely use essential oils in the bath. Um, we all like to have that spa experience and if we can do it at home, even better, right? So there's a couple of things that we need to consider. The first thing, of course, when we're talking about essential oils is the concentration. So we need to consider the dilution. And the second thing that's especially important with baths and essential oils is the dispersion. Um, so I'm, those are the two things I'm gonna talk about. So the first thing is the dilution. We know when we have a pure essential oil that we wanna dilute it. Anytime we're uh, putting essential oils on our skin, which includes in the bath, we want it to be diluted. So we also know, you know, I can, I can dilute it in my jojoba oil or my coconut oil. We also know that oil and water don't mix. So while the essential oil dilutes in the oil, that mixture, once it's diluted, is not going to blend into my bath water. It's going to sit on the top. So that means two things. It means that when I step into the bath, um, I'm going to be stepping into the surface of the essential oil. Um, it's diluted, so it's okay. It's, it's safe for me to put on my skin. Um, but it, it's going to cling to the side of the bath and there's safety issues when we get out because it's going to um, stick on the side of the bath. So that's why we need to consider uh, dispersion. It used to be a long time ago, well, before we knew better, that we thought it was okay to just drop my, undi my diluted essential oil into my bath. And we now know that that's not safe. Then we thought, well, maybe if we add it to some salt, either Epsom salt or this is um, Himalayan pink salt, we thought, well, if we put our diluted essential oil into the salt and then throw it in the bath, that that was okay. The problem is when we have something like a salt, the salt's going to dissolve in the water and it's going to release the essential oils. So if we have diluted the essential oils in the carrier, so remember we diluted in here, and then add it to the salt, we're getting that diluted essential oil on our skin so it's safe, but again, it's going to float on the surface of the water, it's not going to mix in. The big problem, a lot of people take their pure essential oil and drop it into the salt, and then once the salt dissolves, you're getting undiluted that pure essential oil, which is really not skin friendly. So what do we do? A couple of quick things that you probably have at home. Pretty much any soap-based product will dilute, will dis uh, dilute and dissolve that, um, that essential oil in the bath. So I, my favorite is um, natural Castile soap. And you could use shampoo, you could use shower gel, you could use body wash, any soap product because that soap is going to both dilute the essential oil and mix in with the water. So you're going to get the essential oil dispersed throughout your bath, which is the goal. That's, that's what we want to have. There are some commercially available products, um, some commercial dispersants that you can use. Um, something called polysorbate 20, which is um, readily available at stores where you buy um, soap making supplies. That this is a naturally derived product. Um, it comes from coconut oil, so the, the lauric acid that comes in, in coconut oil. So this is, you can use something like a polysorbate 20, and I have used this, and um, one to one, so let's say I'm putting two Hi Terry, let's say I'm putting two drops of my essential oil, I'm gonna mix it at a one-to-one -one ratio in my polysorbate 20. And again, that's going to ensure that my essential oil is dispersed throughout my bath water. It's not gonna be floating on the top, it's going to be diluted and it's gonna be dispersed, which are the two important things. So, you may have heard, we talked about the salt not being a good idea. You may have heard, oh, it's okay to use it in milk because there's fat in milk, no. Milk is a combination of fat and water already. It doesn't hold, <laughs> it doesn't disperse that essential oil through your bath. Um, Epsom salts, the same. Um, baking soda, baking soda and cornstarch, there's nothing to actually physically hold on 
to that essential oil. So the powder is going to dissolve in your bath and again you're going to get those um, essential oils floating on the top of your water and that's not a good place for them to be if you're going to step into the bath. Um, aloe vera gel and glycerin are water, sol are water soluble not fat soluble so again that once they dissolve in the bath your essential oil is going to be released. So there are lots of no's. The big yes, soap product. So it takes your shampoo, take your body wash, take your shower gel. If you have some natural Castile soap, that's my, my favorite. Um, then you get a nice bubble bath and you know that your essential oils are safely diluted in your bath. Now, just a couple of notes about what kind of essential oils are the best for in the bath. Personally, my favorite is lavender. I'm only gonna use about two drops. I'm a little, I'm pretty sensitive to scent. Um, remember that the hot water increases the um, evaporation of your essential oils. You're going to want to add them after the bath has finished running. Um, otherwise, they're going to evaporate into the air. Uh, and then you want to mix it in just with your hand. Um, floral oils like geranium and rose and ylang ylang smell really nice. They're really, really strong and they can become overpowering very quickly when they're mixed with the hot water. So you probably only want about two drops of a floral oil. Generally, I use two or three drops of essential oil. And again, if I'm mixing it, if I've diluted it, I'm going to use that say maybe five drops. I really don't want a lot of scent in my, in my bath. If I want more scent afterwards, I can put a body oil on, put my essential oils in here and um, use a body oil after getting out of the bath. Cautions around using oils like peppermint, um, cinnamon, ginger, black pepper, any of the spice oils, those are really not skin friendly, especially not in the bath. Remember your skin is much more, um, much more absorbent, the pores are open, so those are quite irritating so we want to avoid peppermint and all of the spice oils in the bath. So remember that and remember the florals can become overpowering so less is best. You can always add more oils afterwards so I suggest start with two drops and if you need more scent you can either apply your body oil or body lotion afterwards or you can add another drop or two. Generally around five drops is, is considered um, average but remember we always want to build up that that concentration and everybody is different. Keep in mind if there are oils that don't agree with your skin, it's gonna be more noticeable in the bath. So for myself, um, citrus oils, I know I can't put in the bath because they're irritating on my skin. So keep in mind your personal, um, your personal sensitivities and your personal, you know, how your body reacts to essential oils. If you're using an essential oil you've never used before, bath is not the best place to try it. So I suggest starting with lavender. It's a gentle, most people enjoy the scent. It's very relaxing and relaxation is one of the real reasons why we want to put essential oils in our bath. So soap, essential oils, two or three drops and enjoy your bath. Thanks for watching.